painting metal. As usual, we'll begin by creating a new group that we'll name gold. This is where we're going to paint the trophy. And we're also going to create a new layer where we're going to paint the shadows. At first, let's make a selection of our flat colors layer and we'll choose a base color that's somewhat lighter and that's also less saturated. We select the darker sections of this trophy and we'll add some coloring to it. Now here we'll paint the shadows with a little bit more of a darker pastel color and we're also going to add a detail line so that it can resemble more like a reflection to the metal because you don't want the shadow to be completely flat. So let's create a new layer for the highlights and paint the edges. You want to use a soft edge, not too strong because the shadows are already going to be a bit of a harder edge. And then the glow, it's, it's going to be better suited for the metal material. Create a new layer so that we can add a radial gradient on the center. And with the eraser tool, we can cut around it to get that hard edge, which is also going to help us to achieve that metal-like effect. We will then select the lines of our trophy and paint them with a brownish color across the, the whole trophy. And we can also correct the color of the line so that it looks less saturated. And now we can proceed to painting the darker areas, which are found underneath the trophy handles. Let's rename the layer so that we don't forget later on. Create a new layer. And in this one, let's add a gradient from top to bottom. And we can play with the blending modes until we find one that we really like. In this case, I wanted to have a little color variation that's not too strong and that's why I chose to leave it on soft light. Rename the layer and name it glow. Now I'm going to paint the inside of the trophy handle and for this I chose a lighter orange which is going to give it a more a bit of a more volume to the to the brown. Let's make sure to also paint the shadows that go around on the on the handles. So for these, I'm going to use a hard edge brush. And it's a bit complicated here because you have to kind of visualize the volume and have a basic idea. But what really matters is that we keep trying and trying until we get a result that we're happy with and that it conveys a natural looking shadow. Now, I don't start with that special vision of the shadow in my head. I just paint and go with the flow until I'm convinced that it looks good. Well, at least I think it looks good. <laughs> <laughs> now, in the glow layer, let's grab our gradient tool and make a gradient from top to bottom. And let's place this glow layer underneath our shadow layer. So here in the handles reflection, always paint it with smoothing edges so that you can give it some transparency. Here I'm just improvising it on the fly because I really don't have a clear idea of what I wanted to achieve. But the point is that you want to understand the technique which I've been explaining along the way and I think by now it should be very understood. On this one, I like to paint a full stroke and then play around with the gradients until I find a perfect combination. Okay, now I think it looks good. Now we're going to repaint the line and we'll hide some internal lines. So choose the base color and paint the internal line to hide it. 
And now that we have all our shadows in the layer, we can go to the other layer that contains the inside color of the handle and we can play around with the colors. And once again, we continue to repeat the same process for the base of the trophy with another gradient. And since we're dealing with a smaller area here, it is best that we make the shadows harder and the details much smaller, making things look more clear. Paint the internal gradient and paint the reflection glow with the same technique, which is basically the same one that I've been repeating in every part. And fade it out a little bit and done. Now select all the layers that make up the details for the handle, duplicate these and flip them horizontally, just like we did when we were creating the hands for our mascot. This way it saves us more time. We fix it up a little bit and make sure it looks good. And here we'll add some more shadow details little more darker, bring down the opacity, and name this new layer as shadow. Let's go into our reflections layer and paint some more details that give it some realism to the trophy. Some touch-ups, maybe hard lights on the, on the sides. In these small areas, you wanna make the reflections very hard and bold so that when you scale down the image, you'll be able to see them. Add some more details on the bezel. Paint the little corners. I changed the background to black so that I can see better what I'm doing. And now let's create an inner glow to this new layer, which is basically going to consist of a center gradient. This one I painted with a hard brush. And with a soft edge history brush, I'm going to give it a few strokes far away from the edges so it can fade in semi transparent without erasing everything. You know what? I'll just fade this gradient on the bottom here. And I'll start adding some more details. I keep cutting the gradient so that it stays semi-transparent. And I put a little bit more detail on these beveled edges. And then I put this layer above the reds so that it doesn't hinder me when I paint. We add some white details here where we consider the light to be reflected. Usually when an edge is very thin, but it's strong enough to see, it normally has a small reflected light. For lack of a better name, I label this one shining. And now let's just return this background back to its original white color. Once again, I copy and flip these new reflection layers from the right handle and place them on top of the left handle. In the shadow here, I'll paint a small line detail. And then on the shining, which is the layer with the white center gradient, I also add a quick line detail so that you can see the bezel effect. This consists of creating a basic volume and then adding some more detail to the shine layer, tweaking it so that we can have a nice thin line around the rim. So now we have our volume looking very good, very bright, and it looks nice. I like it. Now let's just add some more details on the inside parts of the handles. Just paint some lines and lower down the opacity. Rename this layer as texture. And now for last, let's select the line art and go into our color hold layer 
and with a much lighter brown, let's paint the lines between the handle and the big cup. By doing this, we get that volume looking much cleaner and lighter. These lines here, they're still visible, but they're just a little more softer to the eye. And that's it. We just finished this part. Thank you. Come on, let's go to the next step.